Smart homes have changed drastically every year for the past 10 years, and we are now on the cusp of some of the biggest changes ever. So if you're not keeping up with what's coming, then you could be caught off guard and end up wasting money and time on your home. Now I've spent time with uh, countless companies, tons of experts, and have been analyzing the smart home industry for a number of years now. So I've put together the biggest trends you'll see this year, and I'll give you advice on how to build your smart home the right way. One of those big trends is going to improve smart lighting significantly. The fact is, smart home lighting has driven a lot of the industry because we all like to see our spaces looking beautiful and unique. Now, every year, companies come up with better effects to apply to their lighting, but this year is gonna be very different. Yeelight, Govee, Nanoleaf, and Twinkly all recently released AI-based solutions for lighting and have attached their products to apps for really specialized control. The difference here is that they are putting some significant processing power behind the special effects and their lights are not just your standard light bulb or LED strip. They are combining AI based lighting with maps and layouts. And furthermore, those layouts are highly configurable because a lot of these products can be placed together using modules of an overall system. They are also all looking at how to incorporate sensors into their lighting solutions. So they are moving beyond you controlling your lights through an app or through a voice assistant and to controlling in truly automated ways based on a number of inputs. Now, I wouldn't start a smart home without thinking about this because every one of those solutions is impressive. And I think that's what a lot of people are gonna want going forward. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life, and when you understand what's coming, you can make decisions today that'll save you time and money in the future, and that's what we're all about. As we continue with these trends, I hope you'll join us so that I can continue to help you build the amazing smart home you actually can. One of the best trends for us at home is that a lot more companies are getting involved in the smart home industry and it's driving innovation. It's not just startups, which have a high risk of failing before they get a product out, but it's some stable, older companies bringing innovation from what they do well. RCA is getting into the smart home business in a big way as they are releasing a lot of devices in 2023. What's interesting is that although they have the basic smart devices that are sold by just about everyone, they also have some really different products like a dashboard that works explicitly with their products. That's one of the biggest problems that we all face and with it only being version one of their smart home products, this could get a lot better over years of development. But there are a lot of smaller companies innovating in ways that are really exciting. Like these smart cutting boards and mixing bowls from a company called VersaWare who are improving upon smart displays giving us recipes because these give us full nutritional information on recipes that we're creating and they link to our personal habits and biometrics. This robotic lawnmower from EcoFlow is completely crazy looking, but it's also a lawn sweeper. So it's not just the same old robot mower that we've seen in the past few years. There are many companies building whole home battery backup solutions with smart features, which is something that a lot of our homes actually need now because we're reliant on technology to operate parts of our home. This small company here in Canada called Loba has made a pill management system that has LED lights and gives notifications based on what you need to take, which is an improvement over what has largely been nothing for that whole part of our lives. And I love that I'm seeing companies like Barracuda come up with different visions for the smart health industry with their Be Heart watch band that monitors everything you're going to want it to. Now it does that through a band and not an actual timepiece, so you can keep your existing watch. Plus it's being powered indefinitely, 
so you don't gotta charge it. I started to see this next trend late last year, but I'm really excited for a lot of you to be able to buy smart appliances that will work with the rest of your home. Even more exciting is that it seems like the industry has figured out that it can't completely segregate between each company. Now what I mean by that is we have seen companies like Google and Amazon try to keep their products only working well with their own controllers or apps. And now it seems like an initiative that was started by Samsung called the Home Connectivity Alliance is going to pay off for all of us. I say that because the Home Connectivity Alliance has made it such that the new appliances from LG with lots of smart features can be controlled by Samsung SmartThings and this will be vice versa. Smart things or Samsung products in LG's app. Not only that, but there are so many small appliances coming with bigger and better features that are actually small, smart. Uh, this cooking pal device called Pronto is an Instapot type of pressure cooker except it's more than that. It's an air fryer, a pressure cooker, and actually it's a sanitizer. It's a serving pot because it doesn't get hot and it has sensors on it that make sure you won't get burned when you're releasing the pressure. I've already mentioned those smart cutting boards and mixing bowls and there are all kinds of new ovens, fridges, dishwashers, washers and dryers and more appliances that are going to connect your home together in actually useful ways. So. This year is the year of the smart appliance, and while you won't necessarily buy one this year, it is the first year that I can say that if you look at one, you won't be wasting money on something that won't work with the rest of your home over the next 10 years. This is probably my personal favorite when it comes to trends in the smart home space. For me, I don't want to just buy a smart pressure cooker. I don't want to own that and an oven and an air fryer like I do today. Instead, I want all of that in one device because I'm spoiled and because it's easier to manage one device versus many. The best innovations I see in the industry right now are where companies are combining features and functions into one device. Now truly, smart speakers have been doing this for years as they have brought together smart home control alongside voice control, next to media playing, and many more features. However, Samsung's release of the SmartThings station gives us a wireless charger with a whole smart home hub. Plus, it becomes capable of locating Galaxy phones and Galaxy tags, and it can even automate your home by pressing it. Their latest fridge has a 32-inch smart display on it and is a smart home hub and a family management interface with a speaker for music. Their televisions and smart monitors are now streaming devices, gaming platforms, smart home hubs, and more. And because not all of this is Samsung, I mean, LG made a piece of digital wall art that's also an air purifier. So we can finally look for products that are smarter because they can do more than just one thing. The smart home industry has been largely dominated by Amazon and Google and Samsung and Apple over the last five years because everything kind of flows up to them in terms of data and in terms of device management in your home. That's why you use their apps. Now, there are a few other ways for you to do this, but the lion's share of people who have smart home devices use one of those systems. But this year is gonna bring a trend of new options for the average person, and it's even going to bring down the dominance of some of those companies. I see two companies losing ground and two of those making ground, but I also see some very small companies having absolutely explosive growth this year. Now the two companies I think will lose are Amazon and Google. I think Google will lose the most as people have become frustrated with their sluggish response to both new product offerings in the smart home space and in the way that we can control our home with the Google Assistant and the Google Home app. Amazon will lose some ground, but that won't be as significant. However, both Apple and Samsung have been playing a long game when it comes to the smart home industry, and both of them are about to explode in growth. Samsung's growth is gonna be based on all 
these smart products and smart appliances. They're about to put a smart things hub in just about every home around the world, and it's going to result in a lot of people using smart things. Apple has a different approach, but they are well situated with a stable and strong performing smart home app with HomeKit. Apple has always done what they do really well, and they now have had enough time to get their voice assistant working right, their app working right, the automations in that app working right, and now with the Matter standard coming, they are about to get a lot more devices that work with their whole system. So it's about to explode for both of those companies, and I think that many people will switch this year to one of those. But I also see companies like IKEA having major growth in the smart home space. IKEA is making great smart home products already that are really cheap, but they are about to become much more than that with their new hub and a new lineup of products. I also think a company like Akara will have massive growth and could surprise a lot of people with just how big they get this year and how many people are happy using their products. They have an amazing application and some of the most in-depth automation options alongside a ton of new and unique products that aren't gonna break the bank. I think Micro Trends was the name of a company a while ago and I'm pretty sure it was like software or something, but there are a few smaller trends or less impactful trends that I think you guys will really be excited about. So let me rapid fire those at ya. The motion sensor isn't dead, but it's being bypassed because the real point behind motion detection is to know when someone is in a space. And so the presence sensor is gonna be front and center in 2023, as we have seen a lot of new offerings for that type of device, like this one from Lewis at Everything Smart Home. The whole home battery backups are about to become commonplace, but I think we are still early in terms of how well connected those are to the rest of our homes and the options that we get to turn off connected devices in order to conserve power during outages. So they're about to be popular, but maybe a little early. And that growth in battery backup will coincide with some of the first surfaces and materials in homes that will allow us to store and distribute power. This is a technology in its infancy, but Amazon's investing heavily and really interested in making this happen this year. Robot vacuums and robot lawnmowers are about to become actually useful. There are lots of people who say they love their robot vacuum, but it's still not doing everything we want it to do. But they are about to, and the new versions that are coming out are now impressive and have multiple functions on them. They are getting bigger and they are getting smarter, and they are finally where I want some of them to be. The voice assistant isn't dead but the industry is no longer going to be led by this. Voice control has now become more about what it can do for the company than it is about what it can do for the user. And that has meant that people have stopped using them. I will be very interested in the voice control project being undertaken by Home Assistant, as I think it will do something that will turn the tide in the industry. Which brings me to AI, which I think could really help with voice assistants and the way they respond. Now, chat GPT is something that a lot of people are talking about, but it isn't entirely accurate yet, and until these kinds of AI assistants can get more accurate, they won't replace the current voice assistant, nor will they spawn other device types that integrate with them. However, that is something to watch in 2023 because those chat bots and AI assistants are getting much better and someone, maybe the home assistant folks, will be trying to integrate them into the next voice assistant for your home. Now it won't happen this year, but we might hear about it coming. I have always found that those of you that watch Automate Your Life regularly to be extremely well educated when it comes to the smart home industry. So I'd love to hear what you think are the biggest trends and the biggest things that will change your home in the next year. Let me know down in the comments and maybe I can use some of those ideas to create videos that will help more people automate their lives. But we're not quite done. We have to move on to what will probably be the biggest trend of the year, but I gotta split it into two parts. That big trend will be a word called Matter. Now Matter is the smart home standard that was released late in 2022 and is intended to make it easy for you to purchase products because 
anytime a product has the Matter logo on it, it should mean that the product is gonna work with the rest of your Matter compatible devices. Now Matter has two technologies that it uses to communicate with smart products. The first is called Wi-Fi over Matter, which I think most of you will understand is using Wi-Fi. The second is called Thread over Matter. Thread is tough to explain in one sentence, so I'm gonna refer you to another video that will explain what it means fully. But for most of you, just understand that it is a wireless communication similar to Wi-Fi and other ones you've heard about, but it's a lower data rate than Wi-Fi and it's also lower power. So it's often really useful for communicating to things like battery powered sensors throughout your home. In the past, companies have used a Zigbee or Z-Wave to communicate with things like sensors and other smart devices. So there are a couple of trends to understand. Number one, we will see less and less smart products that use Zigbee and Z-Wave. We will also see less smart home hubs using those. We will see more and more smart products using Matter over Wi-Fi and Matter over Thread. We will see more smart home, home hubs using those. I am seeing many companies that were traditionally creating Zigbee or Z-Wave devices turning away right now. And you can see this trend in full swing when you look at the new hub from Samsung. It's that Samsung SmartThings station and it's actually a wireless charger and a smart home hub. Now it has Zigbee on it because Samsung actually has a lineup of Zigbee devices they want to make sure continue to sell. But Samsung didn't even include Z-Wave on it. Instead they included Matter, Wi-Fi, Thread and Zigbee. So what I'm going to recommend for this year is that you're buying hubs and products that have that look ahead to matter in most cases. But understand that this is a transitional time and that even if you are buying Zigbee and Z-Wave products that they will still work going forward. The only consideration is that eventually companies will stop supporting products that use these technologies, or at least that's what I see today. Now, when I introduced Matter, I said that it's intended to make it easy to buy the products and it's easy to get them to work and it's easy, easy, easy. Sadly, it's not gonna be very successful. In fact, I think public opinion of the new Matter standard will be very low for most of the year and it'll take till the end of the year before we even start to see improvements on the smart home as it stands today. Right now, Matter is an absolute disaster if you try to use it in your home. Some companies have released products, but I still can't get any of them to work right with Google, Amazon, Apple, and Samsung. And those four big companies still don't have it right on their own apps and devices. Plus, even if they got it working right now, the types of devices that you can get that are Matter compatible are few and far in between, and they just won't cover your whole home so your home will feel disjointed. Now, later in the year, the CSA, who has been working at producing this new standard, is releasing nine additional device types on top of the existing eight types that can be used today. And by the time that happens, which should be middle of the year, the smart home will be attainable through using the Matter Standard for almost everyone. There will still be additional device types added to the Matter Standard in later years, but this will bring most of the products on the market today into Matter. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about the AI features of smart lighting, and this is a good example of the ways that Matter will frustrate people for most of this year and likely for much longer. When I spoke to Govi about their new AI features, what I found was that most of those features couldn't be used with Matter controllers. In case you don't know what a Matter controller is, you're supposed to be able to use one app to control your entire smart home, like the Google Home app and a Google Home speaker is the controller that you use through that app. But if you want those special features from Govi, you can't use a Matter controller and instead will have to use their app. This kind of a situation will exist for a number of years and I think both the people building the standard and companies like Govi will have to really work on this. So Matter is gonna frustrate people in 2023 and I am one of the people extolling the virtues of this standard, but it still has a long ways to go. So don't expect it to be perfect and definitely don't expect it to solve everything for you. And if you can, understand that this is a long-term solution, not short-term. And you will find many people complaining about the inadequacies of matter. Steal yourself against those whining about it online. <laughs>
and understand that the future is what we're building for. Now, it's likely you're trying to build your smart home out in 2023, and a lot of the guides that you will find available to you will not cover everything you need. That's why I've produced my Smart Home 101 series of videos that will help you go from topics like what to buy and how to build your smart home to which hubs and which controllers will help you in your journey, all the way to how to build really effective automations that will improve your life. Those videos are in the playlist that is up on screen now and you can pick through them to help you on your journey. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.